Eric, we need to stop getting distracted by things like goats. Good morning from Tachikawa. We are hanging out in our, our neighborhood. Like, this is where we live. And one of the things that we love about where we live is what's behind me, the Tama Toshi monorail. We'll call it the Tama monorail for short because we didn't even know Toshi was in the name until yesterday or the day before when I did research. Here comes this bad boy. He runs through more than just our city and we plan on playing around with him today. It's an elevated monorail system, one of 10 here in Japan. Let's go buy a ticket. One of my least favorite things about Japan is pachinko places, just because like they're loud and the people gambling away their life savings. This is not a good thing like, in general, but they've taken up a notch on the obnoxiousness. And like, for context, we're in like an energy crisis kind of like worldwide right now. And then also like a couple of weeks ago, like Japan was like, everybody must save electricity and like be super careful about like using too many lights in your house and like all this stuff. This fucking pachinko place is running an aircon unit outside. This is just like, it's just, it's just outside. It's like we're on a sidewalk and it's just blowing cold air out into the planet. They're trying to cool the whole planet. What is this? What, what are they doing? Everybody's like, oh, we've got to save electricity. We've got to save electricity. Pachinko place is like, Psh. put that outside. Right now we're in Tachikawa, and Tachikawa is the middle of the Tama monorail line. We're going to get a day pass because we are committing a day to some fun on this guy, and we are going to ride it all the way south to Tama Center, but first we have to get a ticket. And we already walked through this. I'm going to look like a genius, but I'm not. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing? I already clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> all right. Kansuru. <laughs> Uh, oh no, I was in the kind of right area. There we go. There we go. The two peoples. Two peoples. I love these buttons. These buttons feel like I'm in a command center. All right, so 1780. So you can get a day pass for 890. Oh, get that receipt. You got like a little. Cool, like a little holder for your ticket here. Ours don't fit. <laughs> okay, can't use that. Very cute though. Got the receipt, got the change, and we are ready to get on the monorail. Ready to go to the 1980s of the future? Yes. I'm ready for this cat. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, this cat's back. And what this cat's doing right here is he's letting all the kids travel on day passes, uh, Nori Holdai, for 100 yen. That's all parents have to pay to get their kids on this, uh, on this sky boat. This cat is peddling deals. Yeah. wants to play games, <laughs> wants to have a good time. Quiz rally. We did not know about this coming up here. Like, we just came for the monorail, but this cat might also be some fun stuff. Is this cat the monorail mascot? I'm getting that vibe. This he is, is everywhere. Is his name Tamao? Oh, that, that, oh, that really does <laughs> make me think. Um, but yeah, so there, there's a QR code. 
won't make you watch us jump through these hoops to figure out if this is something we can do today, but we're going to spend a few minutes and see if this can be a part of the day because that would really be excellent because you can get goods at the end and that would be fun. Sadly, this cat's trying to have much more intimate relationship than we're going to have. I guess intimate's the wrong word, but he wants to do a whole lot of stuff. He wants to go to the zoo with us. He wants to go to a former aircraft uh, factory with us. And he wants to do too many things. He's, he's moving too quickly for us. Um, so we're not going to do the stamp rally it would be too, or, or the quiz rally. It would be too much stuff to try and cram into one day. And it would take us away from what we're here for, which is the monorail. So we are going to run away from you now and go and find some monorail related stuff to do. So we started in Tachikawa, which is this area here, right in the middle of the line. We came down to Tama Center. We are at the far end. If we wanted to traverse all 19 stations, it would take us 36 minutes and it goes about 16 kilometers. So this is a very small line in the scheme of train systems or monorail systems here in Japan. I have to note that their icons don't seem to be different enough for me to determine. Like these three, I would struggle to figure out what those were and how how they were different. <laughs> They've just made decals for each of them in kind of some really gross colors. <laughs> These are not good colors. This area outside of the Tama Center station is really different than I expected it to be. There's like trees lining the street, there's tons of people walking out on this little, it has kind of like a beach vibe, like a, and I know it's a warm day, but it feels different, like I'm not in Japan for a moment. Is it just because you got this dress on? <laughs> no! <laughs> you know, beach vibes. The dress was happening in all the places. So do you know the, the um, Ghibli movie Pom Poko? with the Tanookis flying around with their ball sacks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that movie was like a protest movie, basically, about, um, how do you say, like, a construction or whatever, like, them building things. And it was like, the Tanookis were fighting against the people because they were destroying this. their habitat and things like that. Hold on, yeah. get this in the background. So, this does not feel like Japan. <laughs> the Tanookis were probably upset about this. Yeah, so <laughs> it was seriously based in this area. And when they were when they were constructing all this, my my understanding is a lot of this was built up like in the 80s, and it, it sort of feels feel like way. locked in that way. And that movie in itself was like a protest of this stuff being constructed, which is pretty wild because it does kind of look. <laughs> cheese ball over here. It they does. Need more trees yeah, the street's to, a lot better. They need to. They need more trees to hide the monstrosity they've built. Yeah. Just hide it behind some trees, and it'll be okay. So I like that when we were walking through here, we were like, "Oh wow, all these trees and stuff," and blah 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 blah. And then we got walked around the corner and it turned into like fake Myrtle Beach, Casa Bonita, Casa Bonita style. Beach. And we were like, "Man, maybe the Tanookis were right." <laughs> like, like when you first come, like, "Oh, maybe you know these Tanookis, they can still like frolic in the trees and whatnot." You know what I mean? Like, Have some commerce. <laughs> trees here. Yeah, it really does change vibes. Like this, when you first get off the train and you're in this like little uh, uh, tree area, oasis kinda. of nice. It's a nice walking area. The other area is a little less like, you know, wonderful looking. But mm. I think that the more than just this like shopping district, the Tanookis were complaining about was all of the residential buildup and stuff. Like this was apparently super green, this whole region. And they uh, turned that all into like residential and stuff and I'm sure that could be argued one way if it was good or not the other directions yada 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 mm. but uh apparently there's less Tanookis here now so that's the end story yeah Apparently Benesse's headquarters are here and you don't need to know who Benesse is. Benesse is important to me because I read for them at one point in time. And it might be something that you remember from our videos because they kind of own an art island. I don't know how you talk about this, but they have an island called Naoshima and there's tons and tons of art there. And we went there before and saw weird stuff like this. Is this a snake or a camel? <laughs> and it was really interesting. But what really kind of bothers me about this is the decal on the building. Have some commitment. They just threw a like a banner up. It's like, happy birthday. <laughs> That's huge. They make them big here. You think he likes being big? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
one of the main features here is San Rio Prudodand. And I don't know if I said that right, but it's San Rio Prudodando. There we go. And this is kind of like a theme park. The theme of it is like Hello Kitty Land. <laughs> so it's like a bunch of Hello Kitty characters and stuff. And Rachel, if you're watching this, Steve told me that he really hopes that next time you guys come to Japan, we can spend a day or two or three exploring Hello Kitty Land. Thomas Center Station has some very Star Wars-esque geometry etchings on the outside, like a future civilization came down and just etched this into the side, and it looks kind of R2D-esque. R2D2, I can't do it. <laughs> R2D2-esque. <laughs> So this grass right here, I just read a sign from the Yagi Ranger. They don't want you to feed the goats. And you can see the goats there in the background. Whoa, there's a goat. Yeah, there's a goat. They live in the little shacks and they eat the grass. So please don't, please don't feed them, especially during Corona times. Yeah, I saw the Yagi and I was like, whoa, everybody back up. There's some goats around here. I would have to say, I don't really know if they're keeping it up real good. Whoa, these goats look lazy. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. As Katie had mentioned, Thomas Center is the end of line for the monorail system. And currently the track is 16 kilometers. But you can see that a bit of the track is hanging out the back here. And that's of course a place where they would end up parking it. But below the track is still some infrastructure that looks like maybe they could keep putting monorail down and keep going. And that was the original plan. They intended to make this currently 16 kilometer long monorail system, 93 kilometers. And quite a distance down this direction away from the station on this end of the line, you can see where the infrastructure has been laid out in preparation of that system to continue being built. But I think from what I read, odds of that happening are low because ridership is not as high as it needs to be to bring in enough revenue to justify expanding the monorail system as far as they had originally intended. Uh, the construction of this leg finished in the year 2000. So it's been 22 years now and they haven't kept going. So it's not really looking super promising. Did you know? that you need a license for this light. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually noticed that a lot of lights and a lot of fixtures in this area have licenses. And I mean, it's obviously just for them to know exactly where to go to repair something or to note that they fixed or maintained something, but it's still kind of strange. It feels really weirdly futuristic that like everything, it's gonna start moving and you need to be able to report that it like did something bad. <laughs> Eric, we need to stop getting distracted by things like goats. We've been at Thomas Center for like an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. We are really cutting into our monorail time here. I got a day pass and I've only gone to one station. <laughs> Let's go. These trains are pretty small. They're only three cars long. And at the moment, we're at the very back car. Something's kind of notable and cool about it is you can see like straight through, there's no doors or anything separating them. So if I come all the way down here, you can see the connection spot between the trains is really wide. This is like kind of unique. Normally you would have like a door system on each side or whatever, but this is one continual tube that goes all the way up to the front. Not that it's a grand distance or anything, but it still makes for a pretty cool shot. We have come to the station Chuo Daigaku, Meisei Daigaku Eki, <laughs> which sounds like a really long string of stuff, but it means Chuo University, Meisei University. It's the names of two universities. And it's kind of interesting because they are on one side and then the other side of the exits of the train station, like just facing each other. This is the third or fourth station along the track from Tama Center where we started. And the reason that we didn't stop at the stations in between is because there isn't a whole lot going on at a lot of these stations. It's a lot of residential, just kind of going through a little hilly area. And it's a nice looking area with a lot of houses, but it's not a compelling reason to stop and be like, we're at another station with houses. We're at another station with houses. So we kind of decided to kind of like beeline to the places that might have something to stop and chit chat about. And this one does have the universities to talk about, but what really brought me here was that it is the place on the line that has got the lowest track 
It, it says it's surface level, but it's totally not. You can see where it's going into the station here, and it's maybe still a meter or two above the ground when you go in. And that is different than every other station where it is elevated to the point where you have to take escalators up to get to the stations. When this one, you get off the train and take an escalator up to get out. So it's kind of like inverted, it's the only one like that. And it made me wonder like, why is this one like this? And on the other side of the station, it's going into a tunnel. So this is sort of the transition point where it's going from above the ground and then down into the ground. And they just threw a station here and it made it a little more unique. By the way, three, two, one. Does it have tigers? Monorail. Or lions? No tigers nope. or lions, but monorail. <laughs> We've stopped at the next station, which is Tama Dobutsukoen. It's a zoo here, right along the monorail, which is great for families, and no doubt all those kids with their 100 yen tickets are up in this park right now. Um, we're wondering if this giraffe at the station is to scale. I could feel like that might be true, but this is as close as we're gonna get to the giraffes today. We've already spent enough time with goats so I think we've zooed enough. Eric says I should check out what's going <laughs> See down. See who's next Oh, I don't think this is to scale. I think that's to scale. That guy is, he set up the pack of I've seen, out. I've seen ostriches bigger than this. Well, maybe he's a little ostrich. What about this guy down here? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is the end of your life is what it is. That guy's gonna yeah, tear, for tear real. Your soul out. I hope when I'm dead and my body's yeah. just discarded on the road, they <laughs> they come and find it. Delicious. Yeah, you've been next to an elephant. That's about right. That's, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> this seems right. Yep, totally right. Those ducks are pretty accurate. <laughs> Yeah, seems good. I'm gonna need to be on stairs to fight it. That was a good zoo. <laughs> Eric has wandered off. I'm here at the zoo by myself. This is my new comrade. It's gonna replace Eric. All videos will now just be done with this in the background. <laughs> Here at the zoo station, we are going to try and hit a curry restaurant. And if you've been with us for a while, you realize that like when we try to go to restaurants in Japan, forever are they closed when they say they're gonna be open. So it says they're open. It says and they're Katie, open until 7 p.m. I called, no one answered. Nobody answered, which always happens even if they're um, open. We're underneath it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and... That's that's perverse. <laughs> I told you, it's like upskirt carry -off. It's like an upskirt thing. I don't know, you see those wheels turning. I don't know if you're supposed to see that. Then would be getting a boner. <laughs> <laughs> so Katie called this place and was like, you know, are you gonna be open, whatever, but nobody pick up the phone. So we don't know if they're open or not. There's nobody confirmed this. Yeah, I kind of feel like in Japan, nobody answers the phone at uh, restaurants. Agreed. Um, and that could be because they aren't open. It could also be because they are COVID closed forever. And it could be because they're busy as fuck making lunch for people. And I understand that. But it does you no know, good because everybody closes at like random times all the time. So it's just chaotic. So let's find out together. Think we're getting curry? What do you think? Uh, I give it like a 65% chance that we are not getting curry. <laughs> okay. It says it's open. It says it's open, but it looks closed. Oh, I can hear things going on inside. Are we going? Yeah, yeah. Well, Cool thing is that we're not going to the zoo, but we are going to the zoo. So I thought that was kind of cute and encouraged me to come here. Hopefully the door opens. Mask on. Okay, so it's a good thing that this place was open when we came because the people just came in right after we came in and he said we're closed for the day. Mm -hmm. So it's not 7 p.m. like advertised, but yeah, it seems yeah. like it's, uh, it's gonna be the end. It's, um, it's, we are last order. We have gotten the same thing, which is rare, but the reason we got it is because this is how you should order curry as far as I'm concerned. If there's a vegetable option on the menu, go with the vegetable option. And that's what he's got. He's got yasai kare. And he delivers it in two separate bits. Uh, the rice is just on a plate and then it is on a separate little bowl. You did not talk about the third plate, which is the potato. Yeah, that looks like it might have a sweet potato type thing glaze on it. It looks like a sugar. Mm, it's just that it's been sitting in there. That's the oil that it oh, was cooked in. Oil. Yeah. Oil is sugar. <laughs> it is not sweet. Um, so this kind of is more like a stew curry type thing than it is like a curry rice type curry. And 
there's a shit ton of vegetables in here in like the best way ever. But the vibe of this place is really great too. I'd like to point out it's just like a little counter and like one dude working here and he's a little hard of hearing but he seems friendly and it's a little slow to get your food but it seems like a good way of kind of it seems like actually taking the time to like properly make everything and stuff. This is like the perfect vibe for a curry joint as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. It's not very much a zoo in here at all. Yeah. Even though that's the name. Oh, I'm so happy about this. I love vegetable curry. It's like one of my favorite foods. Surprisingly strong tomato base to the uh, mm. brown sauce. Yeah. Like it's, it's so brown that I sat there thinking to myself, okay, it's gonna be a very strong, just straight curry taste, but it is very tomato-y. It's legitimately spicy. Just have some sauce. What are we doing in here? <laughs> just have some why, sauce. why are we hurting me? Um, lots of different vegetables. We've got masu, just the eggplant, different type of peppers, some things that look like french fries. Are there french fries in here? Is this a french fry? No, it's like a long root thing mm. that I watched him Cut up. take out. Mm, yeah. The spice um, is interesting, but it really hits the back of my throat. Mm. Or the back of like my mouth, like where it meets my throat. Like the dangler in the back of my in, in the back of my uh, mouth mm. is like dancing around, like it is being hit with some good stuff. Oh, we've also Set got salad as well. Oh, so it's like getting done. Oh yeah, this guy's setting us up. All of this was like 900 yen. Yeah, or at so. least that's that's the the deal I thought we made. <laughs> <laughs> Across the street from the Tama Monorail Eki that we're at, which I forgot what it was, Tama Dobutsu Koen, across the street is like a little area that's mainly for children. It's got a museum that is Keo Rail Land, where you can go and learn about trains and things like that. We're not gonna do that because we're not cheating on Tama with this floozy Keo, okay? It's it not gonna do that. The Keo is a connecting train line for those who yes. are unaware. <laughs> and we will be not making a connection. We will be not making a connection. <laughs> yeah, so KO does buses and trains and other things, and apparently this museum, which might be pretty good, but we gotta get back on that train. Monorail. <laughs> that floozy the KO line has done us wrong. We got tempted over to the other side of the street, and we missed the monorail. Do you call them trains? You call them monorails. We missed the monorail we were gonna take. Feels weird missed the monorail that we were gonna take and essentially one like the time between monorails is about 10 minutes as you can see behind me if it's still up there nine minutes but yeah it's a significant amount of time if you've ever lived in Tokyo four to five minutes is desired ten is like what are we doing with our lives We've come to the namesake for the next station. The station and this temple are called Takahata Fudosong. It was labeled on the internet as one of the greatest temples of the Kanto region. I don't know if that means anything, and I don't know if it really lives up to that, but it's a temple um, probably definitely on the Tama monorail, the most like prestigious, the most well-known. It's got a big pagoda that goes and stretches up to the sky. A really cool, um, what are these things called? Hondo. Temple? Uh, yeah. Temple within a temple. <laughs> yeah. We found something fun that we want to do that we don't normally do when we come to temples. When we come to temples, we kind of just let people do their normal thing here. Like they light their candles or their incense and they do this and that. But this one thing, we actually want to do it too. Typically at temples, they'll have like a bell that people can ring. But here, they have a bowl that people can bang. And I'm gonna bang that bowl. We saw a guy do it like a baseball player. I don't think that's right. It's leather. <laughs> This
the temple's way bigger than we thought. Got a map, realized there's a lot more going on here, so it could live up to its uh, internet quotes <laughs> of being the greatest temple in the Kanto region. We're, we're slowly finding out. Uh, we wandered around for a little bit and we got lured into a temple because of a duck. And that duck has brought me back to something I've forgotten about. And that is when you go into temples, they ask you to take your shoes off. And immediately I'm like, God, I gotta take my shoes off. And I've got sandals on today. It's not a real big deal, but some days you got so much going on that you don't wanna take your shoes off. But today is a good day. You come in and you immediately get to touch these floors that are cleaner than any other floor you've ever touched ever. They are just incredibly clean. Like we have a robot vacuum at home that does a good job and I feel good about my feet touching the floor at home. But this is like, I probably shouldn't be touching it with my feet because I'm only making it dirty, but it feels really good on my feet. <laughs> I have no idea what this thing is, but it really kind of looks like you would get this out of a dungeon in Zelda. It's got talons. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's really cool. Special thing happened today. Special thing did happen today. We got, got 60,000 uh, subs. <laughs> ah, there it is. We got our 60th thousandth sub. 60, 60th? 60th thousandth thousand subscriber on... 60th thousandth? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube. So we just wanted to like especially say thanks to everybody for uh, subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, you should add to the number. Maybe we'll be to like 61 thousandth soon. Mm. Uh, it's just really cool to actually see things growing with the YouTube channel because it kind of hasn't for a long time. So just thanks to all the new people that have rolled in. We hope you're digging everything. There's a lot of backs log stuff if you want to get into it like a lot a lot like yeah and like we're, we're currently years. going through it every tuesday we watch a video of us watching us and, and then we watch us yeah <laughs> we're, we're going through and reliving our adventures and so far we're, we're giggling quite a bit mm, yeah. yeah so anyway yeah just super thanks everybody for the, the 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 support here and everything and um if you want to help us on other places there's a whole bunch of other platforms like that we do hang out on um instagram and twitch and we have a discord channel and um we are on twitter and the Twitch is the one that we're like really aiming to grow right now. So if you're into Twitch, come hang out on Twitch. We go outside and do streaming and stuff like that. But the way that all this is possible to happen is through Patreon and the support of the people over there on Patreon. Thanks to everybody over there. Yeah. And so we run basically a Patreon thing to, to, to keep our video project alive. And there's some perks there like early access, your name in the end cards, which you're probably seeing on the screen right now. Those cards, which yeah, have already been sent club. out this month. Double checking. We're, we're good. <laughs> we got to do more postcards soon. It's almost next month. Yes, it's almost <laughs> next month. But it's, it's always almost next month. It's true. Until it's it? next month and I'm like, oh, crap. More postcards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we send out postcards on a monthly basis to all the people that are in the postcard club and stuff. So if you want to check all that out and help oh, us out, yeah. that's down below. We, we, you got you sound uh, excited. You have an idea. We're going to be Let's working out. Let's keep it secret out, for now. Yeah, it's yeah, secret we got, for we got now because if it doesn't work, it'll suck. So yeah, it would be cool for the postcard club but if it works. other people will get to try it out if they're in the postcard club. So we'll see how that goes. Mm. So anyway, yeah, thanks everybody that's been watching us for years. Thanks to all the new people. And we are looking forward to making more stuff. In fact, next week we're going to go film more. So we're yes. going to be out filming around Mount Fuji. I'm excited about that. It might be painful. It might be painful. Painful. Hopefully it's painful a little bit. That's what makes the best adventures. What? That is not true. <laughs> Who's gone to a sauna and been like, oh no, I go to the sauna, kind of hurts a little bit. <laughs> 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 Chose the wrong example to fight you. <laughs>